about 30,000 customers get free internet on their smartphones, on their iPads, and on other mobile devices. So that, that's what I do. It's the second startup for me in the last five years. Um, and really what I thought might be good to talk about this morning is not so much the business, even though I'm happy to take questions about it, but more a sort of day in the life of an entrepreneur and maybe why I do it. So um, we'll start with the why, because that's really the, you know, the start of everything. So the reason I became an entrepreneur is that uh, there's a number of reasons, but let, let's just go through them in, in no particular order. First of all, I didn't really want to work for anybody else. Yeah? I, I didn't really want to take orders from anybody else. I didn't really want to be told what to do, which I think is a very common trait amongst all of us. Now, that doesn't mean that other people don't have things that we can learn from. They do. Uh, but I wanted to work in a more um, in an environment where I could step to see. So that was, that was the first reason. But the second reason is, as an entrepreneur, if you're going to have to make a living in life, which we all do, um, you have the greatest freedom in your choice of how you're going to make a living as an entrepreneur. Um, and with that freedom comes a great deal of responsibility. So those are the two main reasons. And, and probably allied to that is the fact that I've worked in organizations, in technology organizations. I think what's interesting about all three speakers so far today is they all have, um, to a certain degree, a technology background. Um, and for me, what technology gives is the opportunity to create new businesses. And what I mean by that is that disruptive technologies are where the world is changing. And that's a combination of technology on the one hand and consumer behavior on the other. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that the iPad is a very good example. I mean, how many people in this room have a smartphone? Put your hands up. Okay, so that's probably what, 90%? And that's quite interesting, because on average, 9 out of 10 people in this room who are aged, what, 17, 18, have a smartphone. Across the whole population, it's only 6 out of 10. So you're already ahead of the rest of the population, even though you're a lot younger. How many people have a tablet of some description? All right, that's a lot of work. That's about 5, 6 out of 10, which is, again, twice as much as the rest of the population. So what's interesting about this is that you, and this is quite cliche, but I think it's very much true, true in the way that you use tablets, and smartphones are going to change um, the world in as much as you will allow entrepreneurs like us and entrepreneurs in the room to create new businesses. So my business wouldn't have worked before the iPad came out. You know, I wouldn't have had a business. And actually, I, had, I came up with the idea before the iPad came out. It sounds a bit weird, but um, all my business does is allow you, it gives you a SIM card that you put into your um, iPad. It has to be a 3G cellular iPad and um, you select and view brand advertising from big brands, and in return we give you 3G coverage. So wherever you are with your iPad or your smartphone, you get that coverage for free. And we're coming out with a new product next month or the month after that's very much targeted at, at the, sort of the age group that you guys are in, um, which is gonna give you free calling, free texting, and free data. So what that means is, how many of you pay for your smartphone right now? Yeah? How many of you don't pay for your smartphone? Who pays for your smartphone if you're not paying? Yeah. How many have a smartphone that nobody pays for? Nobody. Okay, so that's why I'm, that's my next business coming out in November. I'm going to have a SIM card that you can get for free. You can message your friends. You can call your friends. You can go on Facebook and Twitter. So it's for free. How many of you here use a messaging app like WhatsApp or Viber? All right, now this is where it gets really interesting, is if you take a room full of 40-year-olds, okay, so people my age, and perhaps the age of the entrepreneurs, with respect, respect that's terrible, really, okay. but no, I mean, I don't mean that as an insult, I mean, you know, we're, we're just, you know, older than you guys. What's interesting is, how many of the people on the table, including me, use a messaging app, like WhatsApp or Five? Okay, so we've got more people, but you guys are not average. So if you take the UK average, if you take the UK average, I'm not making any friends here, am I? You take the UK average, and your average 40 year old male or female, there's only about one in about 100 who would use Viber or WhatsApp. So this new product that I'm developing will allow you to message people on Viber or WhatsApp or Pinger or whatever else you use, totally for free. So we go back to the why. Um, what this allows, and, and we talked about the why and technology allowing new, new businesses to develop. And then the other thing I want to talk about is the typical day in the life of an entrepreneur. 
And I was thinking yesterday about how I explain this. So when you're an entrepreneur and you're starting your business, you don't have a mature business maybe that Aaron has, but you maybe have a, a startup business like mine, which is only a year old. For every 10 phone calls you make out, you get one phone call back. For every 20 emails you send out to people, you get maybe one email back. What that means is that every single day, you've got a hostel. And I call it the noble hostel, yeah, because you're doing a noble job. If you're employing people, I think that in itself is, is good enough. You know, you've done a great job if you're employing other people. So what that means is every single day you get into work and you have to perk yourself up. And with a bit of luck, you'll work with people you like and you'll be able to have a bit of a laugh and a bit of a banter. But then you'll have to hit the phone and hit the email and go out to networking events and constantly sell, 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 sell yourself. So my business, I first had the idea in October 2009. I couldn't raise money straight away. I had to go and work on consultancy businesses. I had to work in the UK. I had to fly abroad. Um, I have a family. I had to look after my family at the same time. I raised some money from a guy that I used to work for. And I think this is a very interesting source of finance. You've got to network if you're starting a business. He gave me 100,000 pounds. I used that to create um, a um, technology um, uh, trial for my business. I attracted 60 brands to come onto business, my business like Spotify and other brands like that. I had to do a trial. I was very impressed actually with Aaron's five months from uh, concept to launch. I thought that was exceptionally fast. Uh, but I knew that in my business I had to do a trial because in the advertising business it's very, very cynical. People don't believe new products unless your name is you know, Steve Jobs or you come from Facebook or Twitter or Google. If you're a small startup like me, you have to do the do a, a trial. So I did a trial with 60 brands. That took six months. I collected a lot of data. I used that data to prove that my product was really effective. And then I went out and raised another um, half a million pounds. And then I launched the business. And it's been running a year. And we have, as I said, 30,000 um, customers. And we've probably run about 10 million different um, uh, um, advertising events. So video views and probably about eight or nine other campaigns. So I guess, um, going back to some of my key messages, there's, there's probably two key opportunities for, uh, for an entrepreneur, for, from my perspective, that are reflected in today's panel, which is one is where technology meets opportunity, and the other one is, is, is talking about a day in the life where it is a very hard job. It's very, very difficult, but you may have, and I think Zoe referred to this earlier on, in an average 100 days, I was thinking about this yesterday. You may have one brilliant day where everything is absolutely amazing and you're totally euphoric and you're on top of the world. You think you're going to be a huge company. Everything's going to be a massive success. You have maybe 20 okay days where everything's all right. You're not that worried about everything. You're just handling stuff. And you probably have 80 days where everything is just running around. You think your business is going to fail. You're firefighting. Um, you think you're in trouble. You have to hustle people. You have to hustle people. Um, and that's your normal day. An entrepreneur, but the satisfying is, the thing is, that obviously, at the end of the day, you created this, and this is why I think Terry's right in that entrepreneurship is an act of creation, it's just an idea that, that, that turns into a reality. So that's it for me, I'm going to leave it there, I'll take any questions if you want. Um, thanks for your time.